was mine too Till I met you I was breathing but not alive hey. All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn hey. Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Come on You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day grave this morning. Yes. Amen. Welcome. Do we have any first time visitors with us? Over there. Welcome. It's wonderful to have you. And over here as well, some more. Well, welcome. We invite you at the end of the service to join the elders in the uh, guest lounge. Um, if you're not sure where that is, just ask someone, but elders will also be available and ushers will be available to help you there. You are most welcome in your father's house today. It's lovely to have you. Thank you. We have some birthdays today, and I'm very privileged to announce them because two of them are my staff and two of them birthdays are today. So Sonia, she's not singing. Sonia Alani, you are here. Yes. You can stand for us, please. And Jonathan Spengler, if you can stand for us, please. Welcome. 
And then Tina Dutoy. Are you here? No. Her birthday's on the 19th, if anyone wants to wish her then. And then Jamie Isaacs. I think he's in Children's Church. His birthday is on the 20th. And we have a special anniversary as well, Louis and Barbara Olifir on the 17th of April. <laughs> 42 years married. Wow. They are nearly at their half a century. And we need them to stand. Do we have any more birthdays? Could you please stand, please? Thank you. We're very proud of you. <laughs> Have we missed any birthdays? Any birthdays missed? None. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these beautiful, amazing people, Lord, and those who are not here. We pray, Lord, such a blessing over them for the year ahead. We pray, Lord, that those whose birthdays it is, Lord, Lord, that they will know you that they will hear your call, Lord, and that they will come to you. Lord, we pray that they will walk closely with you, that they will hear the words that you speak. We pray, Lord, that they will grow in the grace and the knowledge of you. We pray, Lord, that they will prosper in every area of their lives, Lord, especially in their relationships. And we thank you, Lord God, for them, and we pray a special blessing over them. And Lord, for our anniversary, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would draw them closer together, that your love would flow through that marriage. Lord, that they will continue to be an example to us all, Lord. Lord, and that they will know that you are God. They will share such beautiful moments and precious moments together and make such amazing memories over the next year. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. All right. So this morning, I just trust that God is going to work in you and work through you and that your spiritual ears and eyes are going to be opened, and that this is going to be a really special service for you. And on that, we are going to be having a beautiful baptism service, following God's word on the 28th of April. So please put your name down on the list at the Welcome Center if you would like to be baptized, baptized in water. And then our church hosts a very special event, a date night. All married couples date night. Yeah. So a very formal dress evening. So come in your finery on the 3rd of May at 6 p.m. here at the church. It's 350 rand a couple for a three-course meal. So that's really not a lot. And this theme is Ask the Pastors. So when you register... If you could please send a question that you might want to ask the pastors about marriage to Tanil. We need to give them time to uh, just prepare. You know, we don't want to put them on the spot. <laughs> so if, if you um, would do that, that would be great to see as many couples here as possible. It is a wonderful evening. We encourage all married couples to come. And if you want to register, there is a form in the Welcome Center where you can do that. And that is all our announcements, and we look um, forward to a wonderful service. Please look to the screen for the digital announcements. Thank you. Hey, family. Thank you for paying attention to our forthcoming attractions. You're probably watching this because you care about your marriage. Maybe you want to take steps to make your marriage better, or you have this issue that you just can't seem to get past. Or maybe you're really tired of fighting under all the crazy pressures of life. Just a couple of examples. Meet Charles and Andre. Charles is deeply engrossed in his various projects and often prioritizes chasing bottom lines over communication with his wife. This tendency leads him to frequently forget to inform Andre about his ever-changing schedule resulting in him arriving late for their appointments. So how are we going to fix our communication? Well, date night's coming up, so let's ask the pastors. Meet Puti and Bessie. <laughs> 
Pootie and Bessie are a married couple with two young children. They've been trying to strike the balance between raising godly children and developing a successful career in order to adequately provide for their kids. I can't do this. This is too much. Do what? I'm helping. I know you're helping, but we need a sustainable way to get more balance. Yeah, no, I think you're right. It is quite a lot. There's date night coming up, so maybe we should ask the pastors. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Meet Justin and Reddy. Justin and Reddy are a married couple that once shared a deep connection and a healthy sexual relationship. But the novelty of it all has faded like big time. No more I get butterflies in my stomach when I look at you. Now they are so comfortable around each other, they don't even bother trying. The excitement is gone. Sometimes they feel more like roommates than husband and wife. I remember there used to be a time where we made better use of this. Yep, this is not working at all. Yeah. Well, date night is coming. So? They said we must ask the pastors. Yeah. Yeah, I think we must ask the pastors. Maybe they can help us with this. Yeah. But wait a minute. <laughs> we have the pastors. It's time to engage in something that's going to make things better. Date night. Day night is a chance for you and your spouse to have a night to unwind, to relax, to have fun, to meet other couples, but also to grow your marriage. So maybe the better question is, when was the last time you and your spouse spent some time away from the busyness of life just focusing in on your marriage? If that's you, or if it's been a while, you need to join us for date night. on to our weekly announcements. Worship dance practice happens every Monday at 5 p.m. Tuesdays are for prayer. This year we are pursuing the prophetic word to become a house of prayer for all nations. So join us this Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. for an hour of prayer. Wednesdays are for life groups. If you are not already in a life group, we encourage you to visit one this week. You can get a list of all the available life groups from our Welcome Center in the foyer. Thursdays are for worship and media rehearsals. If you are musical, there is a special spot for you in our worship team. And for those of you who are fascinated by all things media, you can tag along on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Fridays at 4 p.m., we now have a kids' worship dance school. If you would like your kids to learn how to dance for the Lord, please send them to us on Friday at 4 p.m. Friday nights are for the youth. If you're a teenager, believe me, you don't want to miss Chico this Friday at 6.30 p.m. Saturdays, you can do whatever you want to do, unless, of course, there's a special meeting here at the church. Which brings me back to this service. If you came with your little ones, we have a safe and fun children's ministry available for kids under the age of 12. Let me also take this time to remind you that before the service starts, we have a pre-service prayer meeting at 8 a.m. in the conference center. This is your opportunity to pray for the Spirit of God to move significantly within the service. And finally, Sunday evenings are for specials Every month, we introduce a brand new topic that is designed to help you navigate the challenges of following Jesus in today's world. If you would like to find out more, join us tonight at 5 p.m. for our Sunday evening special. Well, that's all I have for you today, family. Enjoy the rest of the service. Man, good morning, church. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I don't know about you, but I'm super excited. God has something special for us this morning, and we can't wait. Amen. Yeah, and we're excited about date night. 
Kudos to Tinashe for putting together such an amazing video. Well done, Tinashe. Well done. And we just want to encourage all the couples, you don't want to miss out on such a beautiful evening. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be out of this world. And we are going to talk about everything. So whatever questions you've had and you don't want to ask in front of everybody, just write it down and give it to Tanil and we will tackle it on that night. So we're not going to talk about the bees and the birds and the stones and whatever else is happening. We are going to talk about what happens between the sheets and everything else that goes on in marriage. <laughs> so don't miss out. The last one we had last year was amazing and all the couples that came at a brilliant time and this week we are even taking it higher and deeper so please sign up for date night you don't want to miss that one amen um this morning i just want to take a moment to just share with you our hearts pertaining to life groups uh the caring of this church uh every now and again as pastors we get to we get to meet with people that are saying, oh, yeah, I don't feel like they support or people are caring for one another. And there's one question that I'm asking. No wonder no one is coming with these complaints to me. I ask one question. What life group are you in? If you are not in a life group, you're missing out on life. You're missing out on the care, the support that the church gives. One of, the, one of the errors of, uh, of religion is to expect the pastor to care for all of you and you care for nobody. Yeah. And, and I'm speaking this because I care for you. That's why I'm saying this to you. Because w the reason why God wants you in a life group is so that you can care for somebody else. Yeah. And somebody else can care for you. Most of what we call New Testament Christianity is lived in community. And the Lord said to me, if you're not in a life group, you're just being selfish. If you're a Christian and you're not in a life group, you're being selfish. Like, I want everyone else to care for me. Or more so, I want the pastors to care for me. But I don't want to care for anybody. So when people come to me and they say, oh, there's no caring in the church. My first question is always going to be, what life group are you in? Because I've been speaking to life group leaders and we're constantly working to make sure that everybody is cared for. Because the Bible says we need to do life with one another. The, 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 the New Testament is full of, I think it's about 12, 14 one another's. And those one another's cannot be done on a Sunday morning. When was the last time you really cared for somebody other than yourself, your spouse, or maybe your children? That can only happen if you are living in community. And so this morning I'm carrying a sense that God wants us to take our our relationships to the next level. He wants us to seriously care for one another. And maybe you've been saying, well, I'm fine. It's between me and God. You are fine up until you hit a crisis. And when you hit a crisis, you start going around saying, oh, nobody cares for you. Nobody checks. For the people that are in life groups are checking on one another. They're caring for one another. The people that don't want to be in a life group are those that when they are in a crisis, they're like, how come I'm in a crisis and nobody knows? Uh, how are we supposed to know? Who are you doing life with? And this morning, I felt the Lord just press heavily upon my heart to encourage you. This is not to, I don't mean to, to, to guilt trip anybody, but I want to encourage you to be part of a life group. If you really want to do life with Word of Truth ministry, you need to be in a life group. Yeah. Some of you, even here, after this service, we are not going to see you. The moment we say amen and I finish the benediction, you're gone. And you can be in a part of this church for years. And if that's your cycle and your pattern, we are not going to develop real authentic relationships. But when you invest time in a small group and you get to know six, seven other people that genuinely care about you. That when you are not there, they, they are the first ones to notice. When, when you want the pastor to get to you, guess what? It will be easy because when you are in hospital, they will tell your life group leader, your life group leader will inform us and we are there. And we can easily care for one another. But if you're expecting Ready and I to care for 160 people and you just sit back and like, they must care for us. It's not going to work. It's going to become a burden. It says, bear one another's burdens. Yeah. And how do we do that? Life group. If you think of the first century church, Acts, 4, Acts 2, 42, they had 
all things in common. They were living in community. And I want to say to you, you don't know how important a life group is until the, you, you get into a crisis. When everything is fine, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Everything is happening. My life is good. But that day that you're in a crisis, you now need people around you. You need people to pray for you. You need people to support you, to visit you, to make meals for you. And guess what? That's when you're calling the pastor and you expect the pastor to look after you for maybe you fall sick for a month. The pastors can't do it alone. You need people in community. And for you to do that, you need to make time for life groups. I want to challenge you as your pastor. One of the words that God gave me this year was so that we must become better shepherds. He says, I want you to shepherd the people. And I realized that that doesn't, in, in, initially I thought, okay, yeah, I need to run after everybody. And yes, I will run after you when you are lost and, 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 and we need to find you. I'll run after you. But you know what? Initially, caring happens when you just say, I'm part of a small group of people. The five, the six people that I don't just say I'm praying for you. I'm really praying for you. Amen. Mm. And, and also, you know, people tend to think that life is so busy, not to think, it is a reality, that life is so busy, there is so much that requires our time. But we need to ask ourselves that if we are Christ followers and we are meant to take after Christ, how much of those things that we're getting ourselves involved in are really shaping us and transforming us into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ until the full measure of the stature of Jesus is formed in us? How many of those things are really shepherding us and taking us in the direction that Jesus Christ wants us to be in? But if you look closely, you will notice that it's just normal life, everyday life that really counts for nothing at the end of the day. So we need to be circumspect in how we organize our days and take the things of the kingdom of God seriously. We cannot allow ourselves to get swept by the busyness of everyday life and not take stock and say, I am going to rearrange everything because I am serious about my walk with Jesus Christ. And so life groups are not us trying to give you an extra thing to do. It's because we understand and we take seriously the mandate that was given by our Lord and Savior, the one we are following every single day, to not neglect the gathering together of the saints. If we only say the gathering happens on a Sunday morning, that is not enough. There is so much going on out there. We need all the support that we can get in word, in deed, and in action. So you need to be with other people that will help you, sharpen you, iron sharpening iron, help you to become better in your walk. And what we do in our life groups most of the time is that we take what we preach here and we discuss it and we say, how do we apply this in our everyday life? How do we use this to empower us so that we can become better Christians? So if you're not coming and you only hear it on a Sunday, trust me, most people, by the time we get home, we can't even remember what the sermon was about. We can't even remember the true things that stood out because our minds are so busy. But if you know that we're going to talk about it on Wednesday, then you hear how others understood it. You hear how others are applying it in their lives, and it also helps you to become better. And if you're already in a life group, I also want to encourage you because just saying I'm in a life group ticking the box and yet you are not attending the life group meetings, that is not good enough. Ask yourself, in a month, how many life group meetings have I been to? If you are one of those people that only come when there's a braai, when there is soup, then you are missing it as well. You are missing it as well. So let us take seriously this mandate because we are living in perilous times and we need to be people of the way. We need to be Christ-like and we cannot be Christ-like if we are busy with what the world is doing. Amen. And just to conclude, I think I, I met with somebody earlier uh, this, this week, and I was saying, and I was saying to them, um, you know what, the, the reality is when things are going well, you don't see the need for a life group. And right now, you might feel like, well, my life is fine. That's good. Yeah, your life is fine. But the, the wisdom of God was when your life is fine, you need to be in a group where somebody's life is not fine so that you can care for them. Because guess what? As sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, there is going to come a time when your life needs somebody else to help and to care for. So don't say, well, everything is fine. I'm happy the way I am. You, you are robbing the body if you are not 
bringing your amazing life and the amazing season to also encourage others. So please, by the message of God, I beseech you, let's do life with one another. Take life group seriously. If you're not in a life group, speak to Tenille, speak to Reds and I. Um, we we want to connect you. We want to inform you so that you can um, choose a, a life group that best suits you. Mm. And, and if you want to become a leader, because we do need more life groups, if you want to become a life group leader, please come and see me and then we can talk about it. If you want to open up your home for a life group to happen in your house, please come and see me because there are so many of us and we have homes, all of us. And I know there are some people that are called to lead. It's just that you're hiding behind a bushel. So let your light shine. We would love more leaders and we would love more homes to have life groups in. So avail yourselves. Please speak to me if you are that person that I'm looking for. Amen. Amen.
fulfill this temple for you are good oh, let our praises let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple for you
Just forget about the program for a moment and do business with Jesus. You know where you need him to touch. You know what you need him to do. Come Holy Spirit. Take your rightful place this morning. Minister to each and every one of us according to, to the need. Minister to us, oh God. We are hungry, we are thirsty for a fresh move. Heaven forbid that any person would walk out of this service the same. Holy Spirit, we are expectant.
Father, we thank you for your presence, your all-consuming presence. You are the consuming fire. We thank you, O oh God, that anything that needs to be shaken this morning will be shaken. We thank you, O oh God, that you will consume anything that needs to be consumed by your fire. That, Almighty God, we may be purified, we may be made pure, may be made holy. Our desire is to be like you. Our desire is to be holy even as you are holy. Thank you, O oh God for making us holy and so Lord we pray that anything that gets in the way of that purity of that holiness of that righteousness today you will deal with in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and all God's people said amen God bless you, you may be seated thank you Jesus Father I thank you for I thank you for every person that gave this morning. Thank you, O God, that we give first of our hearts and then our resources. May our offering be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. This morning, we're going to do things a little bit different. Um, the past two months and a bit, I've been talking from the series Pursuing Holiness. Pursuing Holiness. And uh, I really believe that this is a word for, for this year. Like I told you, we're raising a standard and, and it's starting in, internally. And for the past two months, I've been just allowing Holy Spirit to, to speak to us. But what happened was when I introduced this series, the very first Sunday I preached from the series, Pastor Dave came to me with a word. Uh, and he was super excited. He was bubbling. As you know, he gets excited and he, he, he loves the things of the Lord. And he was clear God had given him a word. And when he shared it with me, I, I really knew that it was a word of God and a word from God. And uh, it resonated with my spirit, but I did know that um, it, it wasn't for that particular Sunday. And so we did not know for when. And so for the past two, about two months, we've carried this message in our hearts. We've prayed and we've been trusting God for the opportune moment to share it. And I feel like this morning is that, is that moment. It's, uh, it's going to be a significant word that is speaking to us as word of truth. So if you are part of this house, may you open, open your ears. If you are visiting, God bless you. You're going to be blessed by the word. But if you are part of this house, you have to open your ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. There are times when God speaks specifically to uh, 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 a particular group of people. Uh, and we have an example in, in most of the epistles that Paul wrote he would write them specifically to a, to a congregation. And even in the book of Revelation where Pastor Dave is going to share from, the, the letters were written specifically to churches. Uh, he's going to share this morning um, a little bit from, from the letter that was written to the church in Ephesus. But because of where we are, I really believe that that word is, is for us as well. It's for us as a church. And some of you already know the message to the Ephesian church or to Ephesus and you're beginning to try and figure that out. I just want you to open your spirit and allow Holy Spirit to deal with, with us as he finds fit. Um, the theme pursuing holiness is it, 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 it has been a challenging, a challenging theme to deliver. It's a challenging word to receive I, I, I have to listen to the messages after I finish preaching because some of the things that God was doing is while I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself. So I have to go and say amen to the message afterwards. I have to get off the pulpit and say, God, speak to me and receive it with a full volume as one uh, who's part of the church and not as the speaker. And God has just been doing amazing things, amazing things through the series. Uh, we've been receiving some amazing feedbacks from, from the live groups. Those who are faithfully trekking with us. Some, some live groups have been afraid to trek with us because it's, it's, a, it's a difficult word to discuss. 
like last week's word. You, you have to look at people that you do life with and say, how is your life? What's happening in your marriage? And, and because we, we are so used to feel good Christianity, people don't do that anymore. So you rather do something else. You know, because, hey, this makes us uncomfortable. Like it was, it was already enough to be uncomfortable in church. But, but there are those who are faithfully trekking and when they give their feedback and they get into detail, there's some feedback that I was receiving for the time when Reddy was on, 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 on study leave. I was receiving the feedback from the life group leaders and I'm like, wow, what a challenge. I get to stand here and speak to a crowd, but life group leaders have to look at six people in the face and say, this is what the Spirit is saying. Where are you? So it hasn't been an easy, easy series, but if you have been hearing what the Spirit is saying, I really believe that what God wants to do this morning is the culmination of uh, most of those teachings. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to kind of transition and lay a foundation for, for the word that Dave needs to bring. I want you to receive it as a word from the Lord to us. I could have, he even said, uh, you can share it, but I felt, after much prayer, I felt that it, it has to come from the person that God gave the word. And, and then we respond. But I worked with him, and, and so I know what is coming. And I really believe it is of God. But go with me, if you will, just for, for a few moments to Ephesians 4. I want to read a few scriptures because this word is a call to repentance. It's a call to repentance. Uh, one of the things that you will discover is if you're serious about pursuing holiness, as we've been talking about holiness for the past two months, if you're really serious about pursuing holiness, it, it has to lead you to a place of repentance. You can't be seriously pursuing holiness and not see the need to repent. Every time I'm, I'm, I'm allowing, uh, every time I get closer to the, to the presence of God and allow God to take me deeper, I feel like I need to deal with another aspect of my life in repentance. Um, for all you religious people that say, well, not me. You know, Isaiah was a great prophet. He was the prophet of his time. And up until he walked into the sanctuary and he saw uh, the holiness of God. He walked into the sanctuary in Isaiah 6. And the Bible says he saw... Uh, the Lord high and lifted up. He saw his train filling the, the, the temple. In other words, he saw his holiness and he saw angels declaring holy, holy, holy. He saw uh, angels flying. You know that whole story. Two, they covered their eyes. With two wings, they covered their, their faces. With two, they did fly. With two, covered their feet. And when, when he saw that revelation, his first response was, woe is me. He was a man that was previous in, in, in the few verses before he was a man that was speaking on behalf of God he was the man that was saying thus saith the Lord but when he saw another dimension of his holiness he cried woe is me and listen to what his confession was a man of God that was prophesying and speaking a word direct from God his confession was I am a man of unclean lips like, you the one that says, thus say the Lord and things happen. And now you, you feel like you're a man of unclean lips. And that's what happens when you're seriously pursuing holiness. There's always something that feels like out of place. Like I need, I need it to be dealt with. We always talk about that. I shared it in the beginning of this series. John, who was putting his head in, on, in, on, on, on Jesus' um, chest... When he saw him in glory, he fell down as if he was dead. There are aspects and dimensions of God that when you see, the only appropriate response is God, align me to who you are. I thought I knew you. Job said, after his whole ordeal, he then says, I have heard of you. I've heard of you. I knew you by report, but now I've seen. There is, there is still another dimension to the things of the Spirit. There is still another dimension to God. And every time we see how good He is, instead of condemning ourselves and running away from Him, we need to run to Him, fall down, repent, and love Him. And we just get better and better. 
Ephesians, Ephesians 4 says, So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord. So it's not just that I'm preaching this message, but I also insist, I want the weightiness of this to be recognized this morning, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. You must no longer live like the Gentiles. You, 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 you have heard the gospel. You have for the past two months been listening to a message on holiness, telling you who you are. Holiness is who you are. You are holy even as he is holy. And, and this is the truth. This is the message I have preached to you. That you are holy even as he is holy. Not because it's a, it's a unique revelation to me. This is what the scriptures say. You are holy. But now I insist. I insist, Paul says, that you do not live any longer as the Gentiles do. In other words, if you have been listening to the message that you've been listening to, there has to be a change in your lifestyle. You can't listen to holiness and keep going to church after the whole year is over and there's no change in your lifestyle. So he says, I insist, you can't live the way you have been living. You can't live as if you have not been saved. You can't live as if you don't know that you are holy. You can't live as if you do not know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And he says, I insist on this. And word of truth, I insist on this. I insist on this. We can't be, we can't be carnal Christians. We know who we are. We understand the great price that, that uh, Christ paid for our consecration. And therefore we insist that we do not live like the Gentiles do. And listen to how the Gentiles live in the futility of their thinking. Wrong thinking. The Greek word for repentance in the New Testament is metanoia. Metanoia means renew your mind. Change your mind. Change your thinking. So when, when you have come to know Jesus Christ, it is imperative that you change your mind. When you have listened to the word of God, like we have sat under the instruction of his word for the past two months, and he's telling us that we are holy, and he's telling us that we are righteous, he's telling us of all the good things that he has done for us. He says, therefore, your response should, to, should be to change your mind. Tell your neighbor, change your mind. You have to change your mind. I know you used to tell your neighbors and all your friends that I'm only human. Change that mindset. I know you used to go around saying, oh, well, they, God understands I'm only human. No one is perfect. Change your mind. We have to think differently. Not like the Gentiles do, the futility, because if your thinking is wrong, you are never going to live the lifestyle that we want you to live. So it has to start with a renewing of the mind. And that's what the Bible calls repentance. You see, what the church has coined repentance for many, many years is simply confession. And how many of you over the past two months have been going to God and confessing but not repenting? Confession is simply saying, I see that what I've done is wrong. And some of you only confess because somebody found out. You don't believe it is wrong. You, you, you just confess because, hey, by the way, now that they know, I might as well say I'm sorry, but you're not really sorry. And some of you won't confess because no one found out. And so you say, as long as nobody knows, I'm just going to carry on. And then there are those that have been listening to the message and, and, and uh, earnestly going before God every, every Sunday. Father, forgive me. And they confess. But they have not gone to the next level, which is repentance. When you confess and you don't make up your mind that you're going to repent, you keep doing the same thing over and over again. You all have gone quiet on me. The easier part is say, I'm sorry, God. And, and we quote scriptures like he's faithful and, for, and just to forgive us when we confess our faults. That's right. He's always going to be faithful. He's always going to be just. He's always going to forgive you. That's, that's the promise that we have. That's the grace of God. But there has to be a time where you say, 
I'm done just confessing. I'm renewing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I'm turning away from this because metanoia means that you change your mind and then once you change your mind, you change your direction. Renewed thinking has to be seen in a different behavior. I'm no longer, I'm no longer uh, happy to just go and say, sorry, God, I have made up my mind. I have decided I'm changing my lifestyle. The story of the prodigal son, which you all love and know, is the prodigal son is living in, in, in the world, loses everything. He comes to his senses, renew all of his mind. I thought I was smart. I realized I'm not smart enough. I thought I was clever, but I realized God was right. My father was always right. He came to his senses. He renewed his mind, and then he made a firm decision. I'm going back home. That decision, when his friends met him along the way. Let me tell you something. When you take seriously the word on repentance, when you take seriously the word on holiness and pursuing holiness, when you start behaving different, your friends start asking, what's wrong with you? If, if your friends have not been asking the past two months, you have not listened to this message. When, when I became a Christian, my friends started asking, what's wrong with you? Because I, I, when they invite me to the same things that we used to go and do, I'm like, no, I'm not going. Like, what's, what's wrong with you? No, I'm not going. I've made up my mind. That's not the lifestyle that, is, that I'm supposed to live. It's not fitting for me as a Christian. So the prodigal son, on his way from the uh, pigsty to the palace, back to his father's house, he had made up his mind. There are many people that he probably bumped, in, bumped into along the way and he had to tell them, I'm going home. What's your problem? Let's go have another drink. Like, no, I'm going home. I made up my mind. I'm done with that prodigal lifestyle. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't want to just confess it. I know it's been wrong every time. Listen, listen, you don't need Pastor Justin to tell you when something is off in your life. Holy Spirit does it. If you have Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit does it. That's why we, we're not going to police you and say something is off in your life. Holy Spirit does that already. The problem is some of you are enjoying your sinful state. So when he speaks, you're just like, ah, yeah, yeah, later, later, Lord. Let me just enjoy. Maybe when I'm a little bit older, young people, older folk are saying, well, yeah, just, just, another, just, just another week, another month. Yeah, I will say, I'll get it right. The Bible says that, that sin is pleasurable. <laughs> That's what Hebrews says. It says Moses uh, had to let go of the pleasures of sin, which are but for a moment. And when you, when you want to repent, you have to recognize that my lifestyle pleases me. But I recognize that it is in direct conflict with what God requires of me. It's not even about you. It's not even about Pastor Justin. It's about you and Jesus. And you're saying, God has just told me this is in violation of who I am. God has just told me that this is not right. This is not who I am. I, I don't want it anymore. The problem with men from the onset, when God told him that if you eat of this tree you will die he went and made up his own mind and like I'm, I'm just going to try and cover continue to enjoy sin but cover myself with fig leaves and you know it won't work doesn't matter what type of justification you are using now it won't, it, it won't work there's only one thing you need to do come to him who is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness I'll read my text and I'll end their minds, their minds have been darkened. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. That's not you. This is the world. The Gentiles, those who do not believe in, in, in Jesus. But you, your heart has been softened. You are a born-again believer, are you not? 
your heart has been softened. When we speak the things of the Spirit, you feel it inside like, yes, this is speaking to me. If I were to preach this message to the world, the Gentiles, those, they're like, what are you talking about? Just get off there. Let's carry on with our party. They will stone me. But you are not like that. Your hearts have been softened by the Holy Spirit. Your minds are no longer darkened. You can hear what the Spirit is saying. And this is what I'm, 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 I insist that you no longer live like the Gentiles because your hearts are no longer hardened. Having lost all sensitivity, the world has lost all so form of sensitivity. These things that we're talking about, here's why I'm talking about this scripture because if the message you've been re receiving is not challenging you to come to a place of repentance, you have lost sensitivity. In Hebrews, he says, your heart has hardened. You, you, it has become calloused. You, 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 you don't respond anymore. If this message that we have been preaching is not causing you to, to want to come to God and say, forgive me, Father. I need to change. And let me tell you, all of us need to change. I'm, I too need to change. That's why I tell you that after I preach here, I go sit the other side and say, God, speak to me because I also need to change. There are always aspects in our lives that could be improved and changed for the Lord. But because they have lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to uh, sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. However, this is not the way you have learned. When you heard about Jesus and were taught in him according with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with uh, sorry, you were taught with regard to the former way of life. That's where we're going. You were taught regarding to the former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and to be made new in the attitude of your mind. Everybody say, renew your mind. And put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Yes, as I as I prepare to to ask Pastor Dave to re release the word over us. Here's the thing: the old man. In he he, con he concludes this matter by speaking of the old self, the old man, and the new man. But in between verse 22 and 24 is verse 23, which deals with the renewing of the mind. If you don't renew your mind, if you don't repent, metanoia is the word. If you don't repent, the old self, you cannot put off the old self. You can confess and remain with the old self. But when you repent, like I'm not going back there. You may fall along the way as you move away from that, but you're not going back that's where we want to be this morning. Where if God never speaks about holiness to us for the rest of this year, we are not going to say, well, that season is over. Whew. Now we can get excited. We're not coming back to our old self. We're not going back to our old self. Why? Because our thinking has changed. Our values have changed. Our belief systems have changed. I always say right believing, right thinking, right believing produces right behavior. You don't get this right, your behavior is not going to follow. But if you get this right, your behavior follows. And the right frame of mind is I am holy because you made me holy. I can live holy because you say so. And that's your thinking. And if you keep thinking like that, your behavior begins to change. So as Pastor Dave comes to share this part of this word, I really want to encourage you, open your heart, just hear his heart. I know, I know this is a word from God. And when he was sharing this, the thoughts that he's about to share with you, I really know that the end result is what God was positioning us for. Amen.
Father, we thank you for, for Dave. Thank you for a willing vessel just to deliver your word. And so as he speaks, I pray for clarity. I pray, Almighty God, that you will just enable him by your grace to administer that which you have called him to do this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To all you beautiful people out there, I want to encourage you this morning as I share with you what God has laid upon my heart. God is going to call you this morning to respond to His Word. There's going to be a distinct calling going out to each one of you. If you're visitors or even adherents here or, or members of the church, God is going to be calling you out here this morning to respond to His Word. That is going to be what the calling is going to be upon your life this morning, is to be a responder to the Word of God. It's no good just saying, God, here I am. And the Lord is a good word. But if you do not respond to the word, change cannot take place within your life. Now, two months ago, God started dealing with me and giving me a specific word for our church. And Over the, 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 the days and the weeks that passed, God has been adding and adding to it. So I haven't got enough time here this, this morning to share on all that God has given me to share with you folks. But I, I had the privilege of sharing some of it with Pastor Justin. And he's given some highlights that I'm a share on that he thinks is relevant to, to the message that God's been given me. So I'm going to be sharing with you now some of the things that God gave, has given to me. It's out of Revelation 2. Now, Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus, revelation 2 is Jesus speaking directly to us as a church he's speaking to us and okay there we go to the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the golden lampstand I know your works. So to all you, yeah, that are involved in the works of running this church, to the elders and the deacons and, and everybody here that is involved in, I want to say, well done. Because God, Jesus says he knows your works. He's busy walking around in the midst. And he's checking out what you guys are busy doing. He knows your works. You can't um, hide anything away from him. He sees exactly what you're doing. He knows our works. Now for the past 50 years, I've been a doer of the word. Whatever the word said I must do, I've been a doer of the word. And in being a doer of the word, I have benefited through it. Now there's there's no um um sorrow in being a doer of the word 
It, it brings life to you. And it brings joy to your life, being a doer of the word. Now, I was an extravagant doer of the word. From the first time I heard about tithing 50 years ago, I've been a tither. I've, I've, I've done I've been a, a doer of the word in every aspect of doering of the word. I've been a real doer. And that's, that eventually became a problem to me. And I'll, I'll share it with you as, as I go on, along in the world, in, into the word. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and found them to be liars. Now, that's happened right here in our church. That very same thing has happened in our church. But by the grace of God, with the leadership that we had at that time, we recognized that the one who called himself a apostle was not an apostle. So... Those are very real things that happen. So they can, can we go to the next, next verse there, please? And you have persevered and have patient and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love and that was my problem. I was so involved in being a doer of the word that I lost my first love for the things of God. When Pastor Justin two months ago started sharing on being holy, I got all excited and I went to him and I said, man, I'm so excited about what um, you, you're going to be sharing. And you know what I was looking for? Some stepping stones to find out how I can walk in holiness. And it, something more that I could do. You see, because I'd been schooled over 50 years to being a doer of the word. And so when God, when Justin spoke on that holiness, I was looking for how, how can I, now, how am I going to find my, this thing of holiness? I don't understand it. It's the first service I've ever heard on holiness. And I didn't know how I was going to enter into being holy. And the Word of God said, be ye holy for I am holy, says the Lord. So I didn't know how I was going to enter in. Then he goes and says, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its, its place unless you repent. Now, I, I want to just share a little bit with you about darkness. If God removes his lampstand from us. Church, we are going to be in spiritual darkness. Now, all of us know what it's like when we have a, a, um, a blackout, when Eskim switches the lights off. And we might have just walked into the home and um, at, at, at say, let's say, 7 o'clock in the evening, you've walked into the home and you put your cell phone down and you're going, because there's something nice busy cooking, the wife's busy cooking something nice on the, on the, on the, in the stove, and you go and check and see what, and all of a sudden, you're in absolute darkness, and it's a dark night, there's no moon shining or anything, it's, it's clouded over, and you're in pitch darkness. Now, you've got to try and find your cell phone. Do you know how big, a room comes, becomes in complete darkness when you can't find what you're looking for. Now God,
will remove his lampstand of spiritual enlightenment from us if we do not repent. Now, spiritual darkness is something that none of us have ever experienced. It, it, it's something so deep and so vast that we will not be able to, to, to comprehend it in any way. I, I wouldn't want anybody to walk through spiritual darkness. It must be something so devastating where there is no hope or it is just removed. You're in absolute spiritual darkness. It's, it must be a terrible place to be in. So God is calling us to repentance. I'm just going to find my note here quickly. And I'm so clever, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> Don't get old, eh? <laughs> so God is saying to us, we have left our first love for works. Works have taken, we become doers and workers of the word, but we've lost our first love. And God says he's going to come and remove that lampstand from us unless we repent. Now, I want to call each one of you here this morning we're going to be doing something very different. You've, you've, you've seen that door way standing over there. And that is going to be brought here just now. Pastor, just know where it's going to stand. But it's going to be brought here just now. And Pastor Justin and Reddy are going to lead the, they're going to be the first two. God showed me they must be the first two that are going to walk through that. They're going to anoint that, that door frame. And they're going to be the first two that works, walks through that door. And God said to me, the Holy Spirit is going to be on the other side of that door to receive them and to start teaching them how to teach us to walk in holiness and how to teach us to walk in the love that God has planned for us to walk in. And we, if, if you look at that, 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 that scripture, if we don't repent, and, and we, sorry, quickly, and God will remove his land stamp from its place, but he's, got that against us, that we've left our first love. Now, serving God, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a sin to serve God. It's not a sin. And at three o'clock this morning, God woke me up to tell me that, that to serve God is not a sin. To serve Him fervently with all our hearts, it's, it's got nothing to do with sin. But what the problem is, we have replaced that with serving God out of a, the, the, the position of, um, I, I've got to serve God. And, I, 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 it, and in every area, I've got to serve God. Sorry if I, I'll lose a little bit. Um, but in every area of my life now, I've got to serve God. Mm. It's got nothing to do and 
with, 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 with sin. Serving God has got nothing to do with it. God is actually thrilled when we serve Him and we serve one another. But the repentance comes because we've, we are not functioning according to repentance. We've lost our first love. And God wants us as a body to repent for losing our first love. Now, I don't know what that first love is all about because for 50 years I haven't operated in it. I've just operated out of, I have to do the works of God. And that's been my life. Now that we've got the, the door frame here, I want to share a little bit about Moses. Moses was appointed by God to take the Israelites out of Egypt. That was what God had, God had assigned him to do. And they had, Moses showed the people what to do. They had to anoint at the, the, the top of the, and the bottom of the door and the, and, uh, the, 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 and the sides of the door with oil. And then the family had to go in and They had to slaughter the um, the sacrificial lamb, roast it, and eat it. And the next morning, Moses walked out of that anointed door, leaving Egypt behind him, and. Three million Israelis walked out of their hearts, leaving Egypt behind them. And that's what God wants to do Come on. with us this morning. He wants us to repent for losing our first love. And that we, as we and I'm going to call the, the, the congregation just now to start walking through this doorway and for you to repent in. There's a step there that you've got to take to step over. And you've got to leave the old way of serving God behind you because God wants to take the church into a new dimension where we are serving God out of love. Now, as Pastor Justin Reddy steps through a repent and they step through that doorway that they're going to anoint the Lord said to me that the Holy Spirit is going to be waiting there to take them and start teaching them and, and, and showing them how they must teach us how we are to start walking in love because none of us know I can ask you this, this, this morning here to give me a definition of love. What is love? Is it a feeling? What is love? How do we describe love? Now that's what God's going to do with Pastor Justin and Reddy. He's going to give them insight of how we are to walk in love towards God. I don't know how this, this thing works. I really don't know. All I know is that that's what God showed me. Now, 
Some of you might be thinking, oh, you know, I've been making up a lot of stories here. But I said to, to the Lord, Lord, please, I need for you to affirm the word that you've spoken to me about Pastor and Jet, um, Justin and Reddy leading us in love. Won't you please that, that they can teach us and, and how to function in the way that God wants us to function. Won't you please give me a word that confirms that which you've given me. And God gave me um, sorry, I'll Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. And So what 14 up as well. And 15 is there. Okay. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you, and I will take you one from the city and two from the family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you shepherds. Pastor Justin and Reddy, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So th this thing is, is not from me. It's, it's what God gave for me to give to you as the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to call Pastor Justin and Reddy forward to come and anoint this door. And for them to, to, as they anointed that door, cross that has been made. Now, Pastor Justin and Reddy are going to walk through here and the Holy Spirit is waiting for them to walk through that he can start. Okay, just before, I just want to share a little bit about Moses again. When Moses walked through the door and he stepped out through that door, he walked into a new dispensation of the fullness of God where he'd never been before. And he took Israel into a new dispensation where the Israelites had been slaves for four or five generations. That's all they knew was how to be slaves. They didn't know what it was like to be free. They didn't have the foggiest idea what it was like to be free. So Moses and Aaron had to take the Israelites and start teaching them how to walk in freedom. And it was a major task for them because their minds were so set on being slaves that Moses and Aaron had a difficult time in leading them and then starting to teach them how to walk in freedom and that they had choices to make in the, in the new freedom that they'd found as they turned their back on, on e Egypt and they walked out Amen. into the fullness of God. Thank you, sure. Pastor Justin. Amen. Just, just for logistics, just gonna we're gonna walk from this side and we're crossing out from the other side i know this is symbolism and um, it's only that a symbol of what god is doing in the spirit so we're all going to 
this we come we're going to come from this side and we go in into the new dispensation that way um so so just for logistics so the the first row will come after us and then you go in round back into your row then the second row just just so that we don't you know yeah so here here is here is what's happening here as you make this decision you are making a decision i'm leaving behind egypt and everything else i'm leaving behind everything that used to hold you back dead works slavery and you're walking into freedom and you have to you have to believe it remember it's right thinking right behavior you have to believe it and so as we lead you we recognize the need for repentance and and we go in first but then the congregation just follow through and then go and take your place and let's trust god prayerfully do this don't just do it because well i have to do it but prayerfully do this what is it that i'm stepping out of what is staying behind thank you jesus
Deus. You sound guys in the back again. Come. Father, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you for loving us so much. That, Lord, you came down to our rescue. That, Lord, oh God, you provided a way. We thank you for a way. We thank you for a way. You made a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you for a way. Thank you for a way. Thank you for a way. We thank you, Father, that today we can enter in because of what Christ has done. belongs to you. you 
the service just want us to I know I, I know this is against anything that you would want to but Pastor Dave we honor you for braving it I know you when I had a conversation with you you said I would be able to communicate it way better than you do but I would have not carried the heart and the anointing that you carry so we just want to honor you for being faithful and been for being a vessel that God could use. Come on, let's celebrate God. Church, when I heard this, I knew it is of God. We have moved from dead works. It's not just about works. We've, we've worked hard to be where we are here. But our works should never replace our love for God. I don't know what you've been working on. That should never replace your love for God. God must be number one. Just love Him. Love Him. We get to do these things because we love Him. We get to serve Him because we love Him. We are walking in renewed love and we are walking in freedom from dead works, from slavery and all that in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. Sorry. Acts 19, 18 to 20. It says, many who had believed now came forward confessing and disclosing their deeds. And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books and burned them in front of everyone. When the value of the books was calculated, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. Mass. So the word of the Lord powerfully continued to spread and prevail. Oh, the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this word in Jesus' name. Those who have the ears to hear the word of the Lord, let them hear. Amen. 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 May the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious towards you. May he lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace all the days of your life. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Walk in this newness. Do not go back to Egypt. Walk in this. We'll see you tonight. God bless you.